Welcome back to the Organic Chemistry Basics Naming Part 2. In Part 1, we looked at how to name a simple alkane with one substituent. In this video, we will look at how to name multiple and branched substituents on an alkane. What if I have more than one substituent on my chain? I can have multiple substituents on the same carbon or random substituents located on different carbons. I treat them the same way. First, I identify if I have multiple of the same or different types of substituents. Let's start with multiple of the same type of substituent. In this case, I have two methyl groups on my carbon chain. I will use prefixes for the substituents to identify how many I have. If I have just one substituent, I don't have to put anything because I assume there's only one. If I have two, I put di, three is tri, and four is tetra. Now let's apply this rule to name the molecule shown. My longest carbon chain is five carbons. I chose to highlight the most obvious. However, you could just as easily have highlighted the chain this way because both of them give you five carbons in a row. If I start counting from the right, I will hit my first substituent at carbon two. If I start counting from the left, I will hit my first substituent at carbon three. So I know to start from the right. I see that I have five carbons in my parent chain, giving me a first name of pent. I see only single bonds, so I know it's ane. Now let's look at substituents. I have two of the same type of substituents, both methyl groups occurring at carbon two and carbon three. We will have to call them dimethyl to show that I have two, but I also have to specify which carbon each one shows up at to make sure that I can reproduce this molecule. Since one is on carbon two and one is on carbon three, my substituents will be two comma three dimethyl. Recall that the comma goes between two numbers, but a dash goes between a number and a letter. Now I will put my molecule together, starting with my substituents, followed by the first and last name of the parent chain, giving me a final name of two comma three dash dimethyl pentane, which is said as two three dimethyl pentane. The second scenario of naming multiple substituents is when you have substituents on your chain that are not the same. In this example, I have a one carbon, two carbon, and one carbon substituent. You go about the naming process as you did before, but when you put together your final name, you alphabetize your substituents. Let's practice this example to understand what I mean. We start by highlighting the parent chain. Next, we number the parent chain. I have the option to count from the right, which would give me a number three for my lowest substituent, or I can start numbering from the left, which also gives me a three for my lowest substituent. When this situation arises and my substituents are the same as in this example, I continue counting to find the second lowest number for an additional substituent. Counting from the right, I continue four, five, six. My next substituent has a number six. Counting from the left, I continue four and five. Five is lower than six, so my molecule is counted from the left. I have 10 carbons in my parent chain, which gives me a first name of DEC. I only have single bonds, which gives me ane. And now for the substituents. Given multiple substituents, I will start with one type. It doesn't matter which one, so I will start with a methyl. I have two methyl substituents one located on carbon three and one located on carbon eight. So this will be three comma eight dimethyl. My next substituent located on carbon five has two carbons. Now be careful when counting longer carbon substituents. Carbon number five in the parent chain is not part of the substituent because it's highlighted as opposed to these two carbons which are circled. I have two carbons located in this substituent on number five, so I put five ethyl. For my final name, I have to look at the substituents and put them in alphabetical order. Now when you have something like di, tri, or tetra, this only tells me a number but is not the letter I look at for alphabetizing. Instead I will compare the M in methyl and E in ethyl. So in this name, ethyl will come before methyl for a complete name of 5-ethyl-3-8-dimethyl-decane. Let's try another example. At first glance, it appears that I only have seven carbons in my parent chain. 
I have to use the junction rule to verify if this is my parent chain. The biggest junction appears over here, and I have three groups coming out of it. Of these three groups, the top right only has two carbons, on bottom right I have three carbons, and towards the left I have four carbons with substituent. This shows me that my original guess of my parent chain was actually wrong, and instead my parent chain slopes downward. So now I highlight my proper parent chain and look at which side to number it. I can start numbering this chain from the right, giving me my first substituent at carbon 4, or I can start numbering from the left, giving me my first substituent at carbon 3. 3 is lower than 4, so I have to number from the left. I have 8 carbons in my parent chain, so that's oct. I only see single bonds giving me ane. Now let's look at substituents. On carbon 3, I have two identical methyl substituents. I can't just write 3 methyl or even 3 dimethyl because it doesn't tell me the number of the second one. Instead, I have to write this as 3 comma 3 dimethyl. My second substituent on carbon 5 has two carbons, which is an ethyl group. Alphabetizing these substituents, again, I don't look at the word di. I look at M for dimethyl and E for ethyl. E comes before M, so ethyl will come before the dimethyl group. For a final name of 5-ethyl, 3-3-dimethyl octane. Notice that I didn't capitalize any of the letters, because when you write a name, you keep it all in lowercase. We know how to name a molecule with multiple substituents, whether they come off the same or different carbon. But what happens when you have a substituent coming off of your substituent? In this example, I have my parent chain and a branched substituent. Notice that within my substituent, I have what appears to be a parent chain and a second substituent coming off of that. Now, there are two ways to name branched substituents. One will be to use the IUPAC system, where we follow the letters and numbering. The second is a list of acceptable abbreviations, which we will cover at the end. So let's name this molecule. First, I will number starting from the right, because that gives me the lowest number for my substituent. I have 8 carbons in my parent chain giving me oct. I only see single bonds making it an alkane or ane. Now let's look at the substituent itself. Because this is a branched substituent, I will start at the carbon that is attached to my parent chain and then find the longest continuous chain coming off of that. In this case, I have one carbon on either side, so it doesn't matter. Within your substituent, Carbon 1 will always be the carbon that is directly attached to the parent chain, and this will be carbon 2. So for my substituent, I have an ethyl group, but on my ethyl group, I have a methyl group coming off of carbon 1. So this substituent will be a 1-methyl-ethyl. Since this is a branched substituent coming off of carbon 4, I put parentheses around it with a number 4 preceding. The final name for this molecule is 4 one methyl ethyl octane. Remember that the branch substituent has to go in parentheses, showing that this is all a branch coming off of carbon 4 and not part of your parent chain directly. In this example, again, I will start by highlighting and numbering my parent chain. I have a total of 10 carbons giving me DEC. Only single bonds gives me ane. Now let's look at the branched substituent. I will highlight the longest chain of my substituent, starting with the carbon attached to the parent chain for a total of three carbons. Three is prop, which gives me propyl as my main substituent. Coming off of the second carbon, I have a methyl group giving me a 2-methyl. The entire branch substituent comes off of carbon 5, giving me 5-2-methyl propyl. Now I put the name together, starting with the substituent and then the parent chain. This gives me a final name of 5-2-methylpropyl decane. Let's do one final example of naming branched substituents the long way using this molecule. I have seven carbons in my parent chain giving me hept. I only have single bonds giving me ane. And now for the substituent. This branch substituent is different from before because in addition to the two carbons directly connected to the parent chain, we also have two methyl groups coming off that first carbon. Again, I start numbering at the carbon attached to the parent chain. 
Two carbons gives me a substituent name of ethyl. Coming off of carbon one, I have two methyl groups, so I call this 1,1-dimethyl. Since all of this is coming off carbon number four, I get a final name of 4-1-1-dimethyl-ethyl heptane. When you're naming large organic molecules with multiple branched substituents, it gets very tedious using the long way. There is a shorter way you can name these molecules using accepted shortcuts. Again, I will use R to represent the parent chain so we can focus only on the branched substituent. The first one we'll look at is the 1-methyl-ethyl. Recognize that it looks like a propyl group because it has a total of three carbons, but instead of being attached at carbon number one, this propyl group is attached at carbon number two. The accepted shortcut for this name is isopropyl. This is different from the propyl group attached at carbon number one, which is called n-propyl or normal propyl. A substituent with four carbons in a row is called n-butyl or normal butyl, but a butyl substituent can also occur as a branched molecule. A branched butyl substituent can occur in one of these three formats. In the first one, we have carbon two directly attached to the parent chain. In the second one, we have three carbons in a straight chain with a branch coming off of carbon two. And in the third one, we have just two carbons with two methyl substituents both coming off of carbon one. The names for these are as follows. The first one will be sec butyl, and that's because the second carbon or the secondary carbon is attached to the parent chain. The second version is isobutyl. It is called isobutyl because it's an isomer of butyl. Whenever you see a branched tail on a chain, it will be called iso. Recognize the same iso branch in isopropyl. And finally, the third one will be called tert-butyl. This is short for tertiary butyl because the carbon directly attached to the parent chain is a tertiary carbon with three different methyl substituents on it. Knowing these accepted abbreviations are very important to help you name molecules faster, but also because they will come up again and again in mechanisms throughout your organic chemistry course. If your molecule has multiple substituents and you have to put them in alphabetical order, you ignore the sec or tert for the butyl groups, but rather follow the B for alphabetical order. However, for isopropyl, you count the I rather than the P when putting substituents in alphabetical order. Returning to our previous example, we recognize the substituent now as an isopropyl group for a much simpler name of 4-isopropyl octane. Our second example can also be named isobutyl because we have four carbons that have a branched tail, giving me a much simpler name of 5-isobutyl decane. This messy substituent can now be renamed tert-butyl, giving me a final name of 4-tert-butyl heptane. I hope you found this video very useful. If you learned anything from this video, please show your appreciation by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions, I will be happy to help you with them. Simply post your questions in the comments below. You can also email me your questions to tutorials at leahforsci.com. You can find me online at www.leah, spelled L-E-A-H, the number four, S-C-I, dot com. You can also find me right here on my YouTube channel, Leah Forsci Tutorials, or search for Leah Forsci on Facebook and Twitter.